Welcome back to the 715 Podcast. Another great episode about to hit your way today with Spencer Douglas. Spencer, it's awesome to have you on, man. Thank you, man. I'm like really excited and like I'm, I'm kind of nervous. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. It, it, I, it is a little nerve wracking to get in front of the, <laughs> we got two cameras set up and yeah. lights, but don't be nervous. Just we'll go with the flow. We'll have a fun conversation here today on, on with mics in front of us and <laughs> we'll get going here. But why don't you, I always like to let the guests kind of introduce themselves again gotcha, once yeah. they get going. So why don't you go ahead and hit them with that? All right. Hey, I'm Spencer. Um, I'm a musician, 17 years old. I go to Memorial High School with these rad dudes. Um, back in November, I released a uh, EP called Princess Charming and that kind of mm-hmm. has gained some momentum, which I really wasn't expecting. Um, but yeah, I'm just kind of kind of the music guy i guess yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's like my personality trait for sure for sure so um you dropped that album uh princess charming um why don't you give us a little update on where that's at right now um oh man um i haven't checked it in a bit but yeah, last time fine. i checked i think it was like at 116,000 streams which that's is awesome which is stupid so cool. it's, it's stupid. so cool yeah, yeah it's insane um but yeah i've been really really fortunate i've had about i think over like in all time like uh 50,000 listeners like individual listeners which that's is really crazy cool. um i mean the really cool thing that you're doing that's more unique you know like for your age is you actually went to a studio and recorded yeah. all that all of that music on the ep yeah that's which true. is super cool and yeah. yeah i think it takes a lot more work than people think yeah i i was <laughs> i was so naive i like went in oh man i th- want to say like right at the start of freshman year Started freshman year, mm-hmm. and I just had my guitar, and I was like, "Dude, I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna come out with a with an album." Yeah, and uh, <laughs> that didn't happen. I, I like the the dude who owned the studio was like, "Nah, you're not you're not ready, <laughs> uh-huh. dude." And so uh, I couldn't even play to a metronome, like just uh, a solid beat. I couldn't mm-hmm. I couldn't do that. So I had to had to do all that. I learned how to um, uh, write other parts because it was just acoustic guitar at that point. Yeah. yeah. So I needed drums, bass, mm-hmm. um, and harmonies for vocals and stuff like that. So um, you were actually writing all those parts? That I did, yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Wow. Um, so that that took <laughs> probably a year and a half because I learned new software, mm-hmm. um, wanted to get the sound the way I wanted. Um, and then in time, when it was time to record, it was um, it was really I, I was nervous. I was so mm-hmm. nervous again. Um, but it, it was such a fun experience, and I owe a lot to the people who helped me out with that justin yeah. green um and kyle culver there were some studio owners who mm-hmm. are just so talented and so supportive so. yeah that's crazy bro i i remember from a young age so spencer and i were real tight growing up yeah um living in the same neighborhood yeah right started... next to uh <laughs> the elementary school right yep, yeah right yeah. next to robin's elementary school where we went to school but um played t-ball together i think when we were like five <laughs> yeah. years old but oh my uh, God. yeah good memes man, man. but um yeah, you, it seemed like you, once you got into that kind of music, and did you start in dance too? Yeah, I did dance. Um, I oh man, I still kind of do dance. Like I take ballet technique just to like keep in shape. That's Cause, cool. Like, that's like that's cool. The only exercise I kind of get now. Um, but yeah, man, when did I start dance? Um, I think it might have been like nine or yeah. ten. Um, my sister has been a dancer for so long, mm-hmm. and like there's always a dance competition that fell right on my birthday. So mm-hmm. I just like on my birthday, I'd just be playing like my 3DS and DSi, yeah. <laughs> like oh, in an yeah. auditorium. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm just like, ah, oh, might as well like do something on my birthday. So I just started doing dance, which was kind of sick. That's yeah. crazy. And then did that lead kind of into the music and um, kind of show choir type deal yeah, too? Yeah, I, I definitely would would say so. If I hadn't done dance, I wouldn't have done show choir okay. for mm-hmm. sure. Um, but in terms of like music, my parents have always like kind of been planting that seed from a young age Mm -hmm. like it's always been like hey listen to this song or like we're gonna constantly have music playing in the house Mm -hmm. um did piano lessons at a young age um quit because like they're like oh you should keep doing piano i'm just like well now i don't want to yeah (laughs) yeah that whole thing yeah so yeah that's interesting um so then when did you pick up guitar after that oh man um i think that was um summer after eighth grade wow so it's been like what is that four years now five years now yeah Whoa, that's that insane seems, that seemed weird Whoa. that seems so weird wow dude. yeah that time flies man that's it really crazy. does um so then once you started to finally get in and record what were kind of like the recording days like or kind of sessions if yeah. you will um 
So at first, the way that I, I hired a bunch of um, studio musicians, um, okay. these crazy, crazy talented guys. Um, I had, uh, do you guys know who Chris Cruzy is? Yeah. His, his bass player, uh, Ethan Schmidt, played for the EP, Sweet. Mm-hmm. which is so sick. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, Matt Hopla, I think, yeah, I think that's how you pronounce his last name. He did drums, did a killer job. Mm-hmm. Um, but what you do is you try and record drums and bass at the same time Yeah. Um, if you're doing it live. So I uh, went into the studio, I had my guitar, and I was, like, mic'd up, and, like, I had my vocals singing, but it was just uh, scratch for me, but, like, mm-hmm. the real take for those guys. Um, so then after that, then uh, it was time for, like, guitar, and who I kept flubbing it so much. Oof, it was, it was <laughs> tough. Um, but, yeah, it, it was, it was um, really, like, just a nice experience, you know? Yeah. Um, just so supportive and because it's like i was 15 when i recorded the album yeah um and so it's like i'm working with these like 20 to 30 year olds and they're just like do i have to listen to this kid yeah you know like i, I felt like that was kind of the mentality that mm, yeah. some of them had but like definitely not they all were just so like game for everything it was yeah. Really cool. yeah so so i think we talked about this a little bit uh, a while ago but when you're recording that kind of stuff the cost of that really adds up (laughs) yeah it does i'm i'm still what i'm doing is i'm taking all the revenue and stuff that i'm making from the ep right now i'm just like putting into like a paypal account and like a bank account and like once i break even with Mm -hmm. the the production costs and all that then i'll be like okay cool now i've now i'm like leveled out and now i can keep yeah because you're uh your two new cover songs you did those from home right yeah i did i'm really trying to get into the whole um home production mm-hmm. and stuff like that like mixing mastering from home really really cuts down on the price yeah so, yeah is that really a lot nice. harder than to do to it's try to release yeah because i'm sure it's still quality but it's might, might not be the same type of quality yeah you know i'm, I'm like still completely learning um mm-hmm. so i recorded malibu 1992 that cover about um maybe a month month and a half before i recorded holocene mm-hmm. and to me when i when i listen um it's just like miles behind Holocene. Um, and so I've just been like trying to get my ear better, mm-hmm. learning more about production and all that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, once I like, once I get that down, I'm going to be hyped because then I'll uh, be able to do it for free, which is really nice. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, a, a skill like music or videography or like football for mm-hmm. Grant, I mean, those are yeah. all things that take a long time. Absolutely. Yeah. Like I made my first Minecraft let's play a video like <laughs> yeah. four or five years ago that's awesome i mean it's gone a long way um mm-hmm. yeah man th- uh, until now but i mean everyone has those type of stories when mm-hmm. it comes to a skill that's more mm-hmm. unique that you you need to spend a lot of time and learn yeah for and, sure yeah so i kind of want to hear your guys's you guys did the princess charming music video together yeah so can you guys kind of talk about that that's kind of a i feel like that'd be kind of a cool story to kind of hit on i mean that was a. Uh, that was a weird start to that. Yeah. Because we did it three times. Well, two or three. Yeah. Once, and then we did two times on the reel. Oh, yeah, video. because we had to do a reshoot. We need yeah. more, more B roll. Yeah. Because the way, well, for Average Men's Club, we had cameras. Yeah. But they're like, they're not really cameras. Like, it's like they're, they weren't very good. Yeah. Um, so then as soon as I kind of, and we were, we recorded with that, um, for like a an afternoon mm-hmm. um and it was raining and oh my dude, my <laughs> guitar went through so much i felt yeah. so bad for your camera equipment you know, <laughs> oh. it, it all worked out but yeah i'm surprised the uh the cameras lasted through all the rain i mean some of it looked cool but mm-hmm. it was pretty blurry and you could tell it wasn't a very good camera so probably two months later yeah something like that um once i saved up enough to get the the new camera uh we went out and uh shot that for most of a day yeah like it was a long shoot because yeah. at the same time we were we didn't super plan ahead yeah no so we were setting yeah. up the skull um, with the flow absolutely and that was maybe it was like oddly warm it whenever was. we recorded that because it was in like january or something yeah mm-hmm. and, and then oh and then on the reshoot <laughs> yeah it was and then bro. i i edited through that <laughs> and we went out and did reshoots uh to capture more b-roll yeah. and it was like negative something <laughs> degrees that was awful yeah because oh. 
we did reshoots for like an hour and mm-hmm. we were like that's enough yeah and I, like, even if it's not enough it's fine oh yeah. man yeah I, I love watching back at the video like my my family has like seen it and they keep pointing out and they're like in this shot you can like see that you're shivering i'm like oh I'm, I yeah. Totally am. <laughs> yeah i'm like Ooh. yeah you know? um but it's definitely a learning experience oh absolutely um, because doing music videos, it's like a lot more work than you think it is. Yeah, mm-hmm. I bet. And uh, excited to get back out there and yeah. see what else we can make. Yeah, so are, are you guys going to be kind of like the partners in crime now trying to make – are you going to – what's your plan for like future music videos? Are you going to go off the EP or some of the other ones that you've recently released? Or We've uh, we've talked about doing one that's on the EP right now, Fire yeah. Side. Um, so keep a, keep a look out for yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> but um, – yeah, I, I would I would love to be partners in crime. Hell yeah, one. yeah, um, that's awesome. Because because my whole intention behind Sandler Entertainment is kind of broadening out what I'm doing. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, before this, it was just average men's club. Yeah. yeah and you yeah. know, with good equipment, you can make it look good, mm-hmm. but it's not like a real video, quote I got unquote. You. Yeah. And it's stuff we're still doing and want to get back to. Uh, yeah. Once everyone's ready to come back in the studio and uh, mm-hmm. do that, but uh, it, it's much different doing a real project and planning ahead mm-hmm. than sitting down and playing a video game or yeah. Yeah. eating something. Um, but it's cool to like collaborate with other people yeah, too absolutely. on stuff like that. It was definitely like a, a highlight of my year. For yeah. Just like shooting <laughs> yeah. and just I mean, like, yeah, that's around. sick. Having so a, your own music video has got to be super dope, man. Yeah. It, it, it really it, is. That's really cool. Um, all right, Spencer. So, Let's just say there's like one musical artist, and I'm sure there's there's plenty more than that. But who are a couple kind of inspirational artists that oh, you man. kind of have visions of or Whew. try to implement into your music? Mm, man, um, in terms of Princess Charming, I would say like the biggest influence is probably Passenger. He's the dude who wrote uh, Let Her Go, like the Do only need the light when it's burning low. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that song, insane artist. His storytelling and like guitar playing is just ridiculous and mm-hmm. i think he was like probably the only artist i listened to when i was like writing the songs oh that yeah ended up on okay. the album. um yeah but then like princess charming like the title track song is the one that like sticks out from all the rest um and i don't know i can't i'm like now more into like the whole alternative indie pop kind of scene mm-hmm. and that's definitely where i like want to go yeah. um but in terms of that i would say oh man um young the giant i love those guys um they wrote like that song cough syrup like life's too short to even care at all anyways yeah no. <laughs> there's there's um, gonna be people out there that will know and oh people yeah that won't so Absolutely. It's just, yeah. yeah um but yeah those guys are just crazy those guys are so talented yeah mm-hmm. um so i'd say that those are big influence as well that's awesome other than that we could take a break come back and crack into these bean boozled if we want to <laughs> oh man all right let's do it well i had another uh question with your princess charming uh on spotify because that that's kind of the platform that took you to like the six thousand yeah monthly listens yeah. and i want to know kind of your experience with that or what helped that or i have no idea what helped <laughs> that like i just lucked out completely mm-hmm. um yeah because it's like princess charming is the one that kind of got put into like the discover weekly playlist oh yeah um and i was looking at my analytics and i got like 40,000 streams alone uh, from just being put into like Discover Weekly. Yeah. Wow. Which is insane. Yeah. Um, so that was crazy and that was really cool, but I have literally no idea what I did. Is it just like playlists that people put your song into and then those kind of playlists get shared? I think, I think that could definitely be a part of it. Um, and like Spotify's algorithms, who knows yeah. what's going yeah. on with yeah. that. Um, but yeah, um, man, I, I do like looking at like so this is gonna be creepy, but on like there's an artist page that you can like log in, log in and like look at all your stats and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Well, you can like look at playlists that mm-hmm. you're on, so I can see like a bunch of people's private playlists. Yeah. And some of the names are so funny, <laughs> and they're so good. Yeah. There, there's one person, um, who like <laughs> added added my song, added Princess Charming. Yeah. Like on April second. And I checked it on like April third, and there was like a hundred streams. I'm like, dude, you can't. Don't listen to my song a hundred <laughs> times in one day. Don't do that. That's it's not insane, healthy. Man. It's not healthy. But, yeah. Um, wow. Oh man. Yeah. I'll have to. I'll have to find some during the break. Yeah. yeah. Like just the names because they're so good. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And uh, another thing I want to talk about with you, especially because we went off on a little text rant about this, 
is what companies are doing right now, like YouTube and Instagram, uh, for advertising. <laughs> because I'm oh not my. as aware. But, uh, oh my word! Well, not to say this lightly, but we are getting rammed in the ass with any try of promotion, <laughs> with any promotion we're trying to do. So and true. It's ridiculous it's because. Insane. So what we and Spencer got it down to is in his Instagram post uh, for his new EP, he promoted it uh, with the phrase Black Lives Matter because mm-hmm. he was uh, putting was some money into that. I the, the, the proceeds, all the proceeds to like a Black Lives Matter Yeah, charity. from your Spotify yeah. fund. Yeah. And what I racked it down to in our videos, because uh, they both got hit the mm-hmm. last two episodes, yeah. is because uh, we may have mentioned the virus or yeah. uh, something along those lines. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of ridiculous what they're trying to do to combat against that. Yeah. Uh, because our first one got hit with copyright music, which I know yeah. uh, that's totally fine because you've been using that for Average Men's Club for God knows how long. Yeah. yeah. Same yeah, service. Yeah. And then the second one got hit for shocking content. Yeah. <laughs> and which, <laughs> that if was you like, watch the last ridiculous. one, ridiculous. There's nothing shocking about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, man. But even after those things get cleared, the promotions, it like, slow some down or something because it's ridiculous Completely. what they're trying to do i'm trying to spend money on their website i'm, I'm giving you money <laughs> yeah i'm giving you money isn't that what you want to promote <laughs> content it's ridiculous and they're not spending it um yeah wow it's yeah i, I don't know. know i maybe they're they're trying to be extra careful right now but at yeah. a certain point you gotta Oh, it's so Maybe upsetting. get a little political. I don't know. I know. I, I in like know. my Facebook post, I tried promoting that, and that mm-hmm. had like the money is going to a charity supporting Black Lives Matter movement, and I like submitted for an ad, and then it got denied, mm-hmm. and it said um, like something something politics could help influence the um, upcoming election. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what are you what are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. Nothing about that kind of stuff should be political, anyways. Yeah, it's, no. it's ridiculous. <sighs> Yeah, I noticed, like, um, with the Instagram post, uh, I, like, normally I reach around, like, 1,600 people per post, Mm -hmm. Um, and, like, my first cover I put up of Malibu, I did, like, no promotion behind it or anything, it reached, like, 2,000 people or Mm -hmm. something like that, Um, and then this one, I posted a day before, like, being like, hey, this is coming out tomorrow, Mm -hmm. and that reached about, like, 3,000 people. And then the next day I post it and it reached 600 people. Oh. I'm like, that's that's kind of whack. So yeah. I like changed changed the caption or whatever. And then like almost immediately it went up to like 850. God. I'm like, oh my God. Dude. So did you take like the Black Lives Matter thing out of it? Yeah. Yeah. See, that's what's just wrong is when you got to change what you want to say. Exactly. So, so you can get your stuff out there. Like, yeah, man. Yeah. I yeah. mean, at a certain point you can like put in hints of it. Yeah, yeah. An algorithm I, I was going to I was going to say something like uh the proceeds will be going to a recent uh movement <laughs> supporting uh or yada 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 charity. Yeah. It's like made it super obvious. Like I don't really I don't deal with any of the behind the scenes stuff. That's pretty much all Jackson, yeah. but um he would text me and give me updates like yeah, our video got I don't even know what, like is it flagged? Is that what the term would be? Well, the way they do it is cuz you can't just buy an ad and then it's an ad that yeah. you have to do it you have to go through a process to say who your audience is and mm-hmm. set up all of those things how much you want to spend um your maximum per view yeah they are going to spend and then they take that and it's probably an algorithm but <laughs> i'm not sure or a real person but they have to uh approve it yeah or they either uh will they approve it or they deny it mm-hmm. which both of ours so far have been denied yeah and then after that point you can uh uh what appeal it yeah. and send in a ton of emails and you know, like for the copyright claim on the music one that was so annoying because i had to not only download uh like we had permission for yeah. the song but we have to have permission from the website and permission to use it exclusively on youtube and all oh this kind of that's just a headache weird yeah. weird stuff to promote to yeah. like put like 15 bucks into a video yeah. just to like add, yeah add a little momentum to it but no. <sighs> my, my, my cover songs got copyrighted. Uh, really? And, yeah, and it's like I have the licenses. Mm-hmm. And it's like with through my DistroKid distributor, like, yeah. they're able to like upload it and upload it no problem to like mm-hmm. my topic page, Yeah, the covers. And I'm just like, okay, well, like why can't I upload it? I don't know. It's oh, did you, when, when you were uploading them to YouTube? Yeah, when I was yeah, uploading oh, them to YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
And it's weird because when I uh, kind of redid some of the edits on the Princess Charming video and put it up on Sandler Entertainment, mm-hmm. I didn't get any strikes on it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, maybe they just got a hunch out for you or something. I don't know. It's annoying, though. Yeah. All right, so we're going to do something a little different here today with you, Spencer. Um, All right. Oh. You're the first guest that we'll test this with, and um, I don't know. I don't know. Jackson, you kind of want to give the backstory on him? I mean, my, my dad went to the, I don't know, went safely <laughs> to the store, yeah. all messed up. Uh, and at the end counter, he found Bean Boozled, what, Fiery Five? Yeah. Oh, Fiery so Five like, challenge. <laughs> it's I mean, they're jelly beans. Yeah. yeah. Uh, super hot jelly beans, I guess. I don't know. I haven't looked them up. They, it could be nothing. All right. It could be. Yeah. I'm terrible with spice. Yeah. Oh, you are? I'm, I'm the worst with spice. I'm not that great. I'm, I'm down to do this. I think we touched on it a little bit on one of the last podcasts, I think with Tom. Mm. Um, I do love, like, cinnamon. And I asked yeah. I asked Jackson when he first brought these out, like, are those cinnamon? But here's the flavors that we got here. We got oh, wow. sriracha, jalapeno, cayenne, habanero, and then Carolina Reaper. Oh. So, um, <laughs> and, and I think the five challenges, you go from – sriracha all the way up so, oh that's terrible so i think what i'll do is i'll open them up and then i'll just dump them out yeah and, and then we got and then sort we them can out. we can sort them i'll try to make sure we get the i mean for people who are listening to the uh to the audio version this might be a better one to look at on the uh on yeah the YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah this will be fun but regardless oh. i think you'll get some enjoyment out of it i don't know if we will <laughs> probably not so um here i'll Oh, they're not all out. There we go. So I'll make sure the bag's visible for you guys. Let's start on Sriracha. What color? Is that green? Um, it's kind of like the darker orange. So what flavors do we have again? Sriracha, jalapeno, cayenne, habanero, and Carolina Reaper. I think I'll be huh. able to handle the first two. First I, two I don't even know if I could do the. I've never <laughs> even had Sriracha. You oh, guys, I love do you Sriracha. Love, do you like yeah. Sriracha? Yeah, I put yeah, Sriracha I've in my mouth. I've never had mom. Sriracha. You've never had Sriracha? No, nah, uh, dude. Don't sweat it, then you're. Yeah, you'll be. You'll fine. be fine. Okay, is it? It's just like a spicy ketchup. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's like the best way to put it. Yeah. All right, so I think this is this is the color we're looking for on sriracha. Well, it looks like. Yeah. Or this could be cayenne. I, I, it's tough because <laughs> the bright, bright orange ones are the. Well, this is the Carolina Reaper one oh, with the with, with the, the black. With the I'm gonna guess just a plain red one is the sriracha one. All right. <laughs> I don't, I don't, this is like a, this, the one that I grabbed is like, a, <laughs> that looks, I don't know that what sketchy. that is, bro. <laughs> I want to trade that, that out so for So, uh, let's pop them in. Uh, okay. Uh, sriracha here. And. Wow. That's sriracha. Oh, man, I'm already. That is spicy. That's hot yeah. for a jelly bean. <laughs> are, are you sure that's sriracha, <laughs> dude? But, anyways, let's try to keep this interview going here. <coughs> oh. That... Wow, man. <laughs> I'm not good with heat. That's so bad. Oh, oh, that was. There's no way that's sriracha, is it? You guys had sriracha. This is not sriracha. <laughs> we grabbed the wrong one. We grabbed the wrong one. That's for sure. But did where we, do we go from here? We go we to just, jalapeno. Did we do a Carolina Reaper? One? We probably did the worst one first. Oh, oh that that's awful. <laughs> oh, I got the hiccups. I've never had the heat hiccups. I've never had the heat hiccups. <laughs> oh, 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 this oh. is awful. I've never had the heat. Oh. Heat hiccups like that, dude. <laughs> oh no, um, ah, man! I had a good question to ask you. <laughs> Leave it up to us to grab the wrong damn jelly. <laughs> <laughs> we should have just started with one that we knew wasn't Carolina Reaper, but oh, true. this is awful. Who knows? Maybe that's how it, bad it actually is. Oh my god! Oh. If that's actually the that's uh, not sriracha. <laughs> there's no way that's the. Spencer's got his Lacroix out, <clears throat> Grand Raspberry. Love it. Love oh. to see it. But, I love um, Lacroix. Yeah, yes, sir. Woo! <laughs> That's supposed to be the coolest one. It's Ugh. supposed to be. So do we go from green here now? Welcome I'm welcome a, to the podcast. Thank you. Maybe is, we this get... a, is this the first podcast you've been on? Um, I went on one with... Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I went on one with a dude named Luke... A- uh, Luke... <laughs> Luke <hot>. Anthony. <laughs> oh, that's so hot. So well, this is the second podcast. Second on. one, yeah. This is quite one the of experience, the, huh? Yeah, one of the longer ones. Yeah. Seven one five. We're going on a uh, on the uh, hot train here. The five. Oh my five, god, five dude, star this is challenge. unbearable. I might have to grab some more water. Oh, <sighs> oh, I just like did a little, and it, that was the worst <laughs> decision ever. That like just reset everything. That don't do it. It's bad. <laughs> oh, it is. Anyways, I just want to go green now because now I think 
I just want to keep going. Up. I don't know, dude. We're like, gonna we're gonna eat five regardless, whether it's five girls. I don't know, dude. I think I might have to tap out. Let's give it a couple minutes at least. I we definitely grabbed the wrong one. Oh my god. There's no way that's got to I think we'll know immediately. My ears hurt. <laughs> we'll know immediately. How does it get worse? I don't know. <laughs> it's a jelly bean. How do they... Does, do they actually put carrot... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pull my mic out. All I wanted, oh. all I wanted to do was grab the dang. Dang. Oh. So do they actually put, like, stuff in it? Because... There's no way they don't. <sighs> oh, this is awful. <sighs> oh. If it's like a... If it's like actual yeah. Carolina Reaper powder, I'm no, eating. it is Carolina Reaper puree, jalapeno puree, cayenne pepper puree. Dude, I can barely withstand barbecue sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Quite the introduction to sriracha. <laughs> That's not what sriracha tastes like. <laughs> All right, I'm going jalapeno. You boys with me? Let's do it. Oh my! I think jalapeno oh, is pretty self-explanatory. It's the only green. You one. know what? You just. You do it. You I go wanted, for it. You go for it. It's too late to turn back. <laughs> it's too late to turn back. I'm crying. This ain't this ain't no cinnamon fireball like I thought it'd be, man. That's Not what I, I love that because that. Oh my god! I'm almost done with my Lacroix. <laughs> Woo! Jalapeno. God, you're no a habanero. Beast. No, that's jalapeno. Oh, jalapeno. That's way better. Is it? <laughs> that tastes like a green pepper right now. Does it actually? Yeah. Oh, it, t- it tastes like a green pepper, and it's just a little subtle hint, but it's way better than the one I just had. I think we ate Carolina Reaper then. Oh. Grant, probably the one you tapped out of was Sriracha. Probably. That's oh. what I'm saying right now. Should have oh. trusted my gut. <laughs> this one. Well, my tummy be hurting, yeah. bro. Hold up. That was Cayenne or ha- or Carolina Reaper. It's hard to tell the well, difference. Carolina Reaper was the lighter to be, one. Yeah, it was supposed to be red. It's this one. Whoa. This is Carolina Reaper. Yeah. It, there. <laughs> T- um, you can take a bite and smell it and see if it's like the same as the one. I'll eat another said. one. Oh my god. <laughs> You're so, a tank, dude. This I is- just don't. I've never really. Ex- I've always wanted to just try one, but I guess this is as close as I could get right now. Okay. So I mean, like, it's an <laughs> experience. Like, yeah. And it may. Uh, who knows? Maybe it'll linger. Hopefully, it doesn't linger into like. Uh, I think we're gonna when go, to, go the grave, to the bathroom. To the grave with this, dude. Oh my god. <clears throat> my saliva's starting to thicken up and mm-hmm. I'm choking on my saliva. Really? <laughs> oh. Carolina Reaper. Down the hatch, so, baby. Well, this is an This is for sure a Carolina because Reaper. Because it's red <laughs> with, it's got the flake. with the dots on it. Yeah. The one we just ate, that was red. I can't believe we didn't get the this is definitely sriracha now that I'm looking at it, dude. Yeah, it And you're like, is. no, that's not sriracha. That's Carolina <laughs> Reaper. Oh, my God. Give me the Reaper. You're unbelievable, <laughs> dude. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. Nah. That, that's the one we ate? I don't even... There's nothing right His now. His tongue is just numb <laughs> yeah. right now. Yeah, there's actually nothing right now. And now it's starting to, like, come back because I did it... Uh, I did it on the other side of my <laughs> mouth. Why would I do that? Ooh, not so I did both move. of them on, on, oh, on the left side, and then uh-huh. I switched it over to the right. But yeah, that's bad. Oh my god! So, yeah. it, it's so we delayed. Did, we did eat the Carolina Reaper ones right away. But that's three. <laughs> oh I got I got to do five, and I'll do five of the different ones. Next up is habanero. Can you guys give me a pass if I did two um, <laughs> Carolina Reapers? I mean, we're not doing it. You're we're not doing, doing it, it. So you have all the passes you want. Man. <laughs> so this is habanero then, dark red with a little tint of orange. Uh, that's cayenne. Habanero. Cayenne. Yep. Yeah. Are you doing both at the same time? Yeah, I'll just do both Ooh. so they get done with it. I mean, did the other ones have, like, flavor? Ugh. The Carolina Reaper one, that was not flavor. It was just hot. I thought it was sriracha for, like, a split Hold second. On. The habanero is actually very sweet, and then it just, boom. Just, boom. It's, like, <laughs> hits you right in the... They're hot. But That's crazy. Well... Man. I did five. So... You did five. Hats off to, uh... Jelly Belly for making some hot jelly beans. Yeah, I never thought I'd be able to experience a Carolina Reaper, and I still well, haven't. But it's you said Carolina, Carolina Re- Reaper puree. Puree. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I don't know how actually. I don't know how close that actually is, but uh, dude, if it's anything remotely like that, I'm going to stay away yeah. from for the rest of my life. <laughs> so what's the one we did the one chip challenge on Average Men's Club once? Yeah. What's that made out of? I have is that Carolina Reaper? I think so. Oh my god, you Woo! guys are insane! But that was a Carolina Reaper powder. Oh, that's which true. I, that got to be worse. I think it was worse because 
you can like inhale it and it oh, stays that's everywhere. Oh, so true. Man. We were gonna we recorded uh, with Vince right before this, and we brought up the jelly beans, and he was like, "Nah, I got braces. If that stuff gets stuck." <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's I'm not so gonna be true. able to finish the podcast. <laughs> but anyways, it, it jelly beans will stick in your mouth anyways in yeah. your teeth and things. I got stuff stuck all over. Oh. You guys got a favorite flavor of jelly bean? Ooh. I'm a I'm a weird guy. Taking it back to Vince, I, <laughs> popcorn is his dad's favorite jelly of bean. Jelly bean? Oh, yeah, dude. And I'm no, like, what? I'm not I'm not something about like the texture. Because you know, like with yeah. popcorn you want something that's light and for fluffy. sure. Whereas something like you're biting something that's kind of like semi hard and chewy. Yeah. I don't know. It just doesn't sit right. I don't right. think it tastes like popcorn either. It doesn't. No, my favorite uh, jelly bean flavor is the bean boozled uh, toothpaste one. Really? No, honestly, it's so good. It's, it's not good. Bad. That's it's a not nice bad. pass that, if you get that. Yeah. yeah. What is it? It's it's like. It's either blueberry or, yeah, or toothpaste. Something like that. Not, not a bad trade off, honestly. Toothpaste. Like it's like you're eating a. Uh, it's like you're brushing your teeth. <laughs> Grant, what's happening? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just <laughs> trying to breathe. Bro. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you need some napkins. I'm just them. trying to breathe, man, and it hurts. It like it just hurts to like, exhale. And, but, yeah, I'll be right back. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> this is so- 715. This is so- Got a lot of diversity on here with uh, <laughs> Habanero and uh, Carolina Reaper and whatever. A lot of content. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, it's all about the content and the experiences. And man. Just can't wait for more, <sighs> man. I don't know how worse it could get as far as spice, but. Yeah. Have you ever had a spicy, like, coffee? No. Nah. I went, okay, so one for, like, just, like, background. I love coffee. I also love tea. But, nice. So I went to this one coffee shop uh huh. it was like collectivo yeah down in like madison or something um because i was with like the kids from wisconsin i can talk more about that later if you want yeah yeah i wanted to ask um, you about that but yeah so it was down at collectivo in madison at one of the f- branches mm-hmm. and um what i like to do when i go to like a coffee shop i just go uh surprise me i'm like super open-minded give me whatever i'll probably like it so um I, I went up, I was just like, I was like, hey, surprise me. And they're like, oh, are you, are you sure? I'm like, yeah, I, I don't care. Like, yeah. <laughs> if I don't like it, that's my fault. I paid mm. for it. Like, you're fine. Excuse me. Um, and so they're just like, okay, well, be ready. I'm like, what? Are, are you going to, like, spike my drink? Yeah. What's up? <laughs> anyway, so I get it, and I, and I drink it. And immediately, my, I'm, like, I'm like, oh, it's warm. But then it, like, became spicy. Yeah. And it was the weirdest sensation so was, did you get it had. as like an iced coffee no, yeah actually oh it was it was an iced coffee okay I, I, at first i thought it was like a hot coffee no it was definitely iced okay because like when you said it was warm i'm like yeah coffee is like supposed to be hot, yeah but no man it was, it was iced yeah it was wow. iced. and so i'm just like that is weird and then it, i kept drinking it and like i like inhaled wrong uh-huh. and then mm. like i got it like in my nose oh awful, <laughs> awful. and then like, i'm like what did you put in this yeah. it's like oh just some like some cajun yeah uh, pepper <laughs> and like some red pepper flakes I'm like you put that in a coffee yeah. <laughs> I'm like, is that? And he's like, yeah, it's our bonfire. I'm like, I thought that would be like s'mores. Or something. That's a good name. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, dude, I would love to own a coffee shop. That'd be so yeah. sick. Well, you could. I think a vibe out of a lot of coffee shops too is you go have like the acoustic kind of. You could get those <laughs> local artists that come in and play too. Yeah, dude, so that'd my be... like my million dollar idea is like, um, so downtown we have like the nucleus. Mm-hmm. It's connected to Racy's. Like you go down the back hallway and yeah. meet Racy's. Love Racy's. Anyways. Um, my idea is, like, you get a shop <clears throat> kind of set up like Racy's, maybe not, mm-hmm. but, like, it doubles as, like, a guitar store, music store, music venue, and, like, a bakery slash coffee shop. Or just All cafe. in one, yeah. Like, I think that'd be sick. Yeah. Because um, then, like, <clears throat> you're, like, drinking coffee and, like, you're just kind of listening to people noodle around on guitars and basses and keyboards mm-hmm. and whatever. And then, like, I would love to have, like, a circular stage that you could, like, bring out into the middle of the shop and then, like, host, like, gigs yeah. there or whatever. Didn't you didn't you perform at Acoustic, right? Um, yeah, I've I've done a couple open mics there. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, so I I've been pretty lucky with that. Um, what, a buddy of mine performs there a lot, and mm-hmm. there there was a time when I just like went to go see him to support because like support your buddies and all yeah. that. Yeah, and like he's like, all right, I'm gonna take a break. My buddy's gonna come up. I'm like, oh, who's your buddy? And he's like, it's you. I'm like, oh, <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> Thanks for the heads up. Yeah. Appreciate it. Um, but no, and so I have done that. Um. I've had a couple gigs. Mm-hmm. Um, I like the one that I had at like it was like 500 Art and Wine or something like that. Main Street, Main Art and Wine. Oh, I'm butchering that. Um, really cute like shop. It has like a it's like a wine dispensary. Mm-hmm. It's really sick. Um, 
really small so like i could only you could only fit like maybe 20 30 people in there mm-hmm. but like that intimate set like setting is really nice yeah. and kind of special yeah. so and uh we were talking about this i think when we were recording the music video but there's like way more stuff behind even those smaller live performances than most people think right yeah i, I mean i would say so um there's definitely all the like the the practicing your set list mm-hmm. getting your banter down kind of thing um but but definitely like if you're doing like say like acoustic cafe or something like that mm-hmm. and if they don't have a sound guy like bring an amp bring a mic yeah stuff like that um but yeah like big shows there's so much that goes into that it's mm-hmm. insane all um, right spencer so um something you did kind of in prior summers as kids of wisconsin could you touch up a little bit of what kind of what that entails yeah absolutely uh kids from wisconsin was a a thing i auditioned for <clears throat> excuse me again uh freshman year i think okay um, I auditioned when I was 14. The age range is uh, 15 to 20, and as long as you turn 15 before the summer, you're good. So mm-hmm. I auditioned when I was 14. Um, I got accepted as an understudy, and um, I lucked out. You'll notice that's like a reoccurring theme. I lucked out on a <laughs> lot of things, but I lucked out, and a um, uh, person had to drop. There was like a scholarship opportunity that he would have to miss a lot of the tour for. Mm-hmm. Um, and so then I got bumped up, and so that was, that was ex- insanely lucky. And yeah. um, just the... The elevator pitch is uh, like, well, Kids from Wisconsin is a uh, 15 to 20 year old uh, performing group comprised of 36 members, uh, 22 singer dancers, and a 14 piece band. Um, and we were like a Las Vegas style production. So okay. it's like uh, medleys. So like a 60s medley, like a bunch of 60s music, 70s, all 70s, and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so there's that kind of vibe behind it. Um, and we trained for about two weeks down uh originally it was on the wisconsin state fairgrounds but then they Mm -hmm. uh dropped their sponsorship and then uh, wisconsin lutheran college picked us up so we were uh we would rehearse there which is really nice like air conditioning yeah um whereas like before not the best (laughs) air conditioning um but yeah so man it it was such an incredible experience um even just the training like if you ask anybody like who was in kids from wisconsin like oh what was your favorite part about kids no one will say like training no one will say camp um, because camp is 18 hour days wow. um, of just singing and dancing <laughs> and then you get like barely any breaks. It, it's exhausting. And like mm-hmm. mentally and physically. Um, and I remember my, my first year I, I was the baby. I was the baby boy. Yeah. Um, and in the tenor section, I was surrounded by 18 and 20 year olds. <laughs> um, Matt Ganya, he was a Memorial high school. Alum. I don't know if you guys know that guy. Uh, really cool dude, but uh, insanely talented. And so, like, I, I like sat between him and my buddy Andre, <clears throat> who I didn't know at the time. And they're just powerhouses. Mm-hmm. They're so talented. Um, so I, I like had a huge self confidence crisis. <laughs> like, yeah. first, I'm like, dude, I'm so good, and yeah. that took me way down. Yeah, that took that brought me so <laughs> far down. But um, yeah, it was such an amazing time. We performed about 64 shows. Wow, wow. In about two and a half months. Um, and is that just around Wisconsin, or are you guys going all We're, around the U.S.? Um, oh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say uh, what the plans are for the future. But well, like previously. <laughs> previously, um, they used to do shows in, like, Michigan, mm-hmm. and um, and we always had a show in, like, Dubuque, Iowa. Yeah. That show is so pretty. It's in a floral garden, mm-hmm. and it's outside. Wow. It's an outdoor show. And with the outdoor shows, you don't have, like, a, a max capacity limit or yeah. anything. So I think last year – excuse me, I don't want to, like, uh, overstate the numbers, but it was, like, between 3,000 to, like, 5,000 people showed up to wow, one like an outdoor. Like an outdoor. Wow, that's it was awesome. insane. Insane. Um, so there is – it's just such an incredible experience. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we performed, like, each summer in front of 120,000 people. Yeah, so it's like wow. I've performed in front of about a quarter of a million people just by those two summers alone, Yeah, yeah. which is insane. So, um, is there like a cap? Can you like, like, let's say you've done it five times. Is there like a cap for how many times you can do it or can you do it every year if you keep making it? You can do it every year if you keep making it, if you're in the age range. So, um, I didn't audition this year. I I got a couple like, uh, internships lined up at studios, but like, Mm -hmm. uh, COVID-19 came about. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. We've talked about it. And and so I've, I've. they had to cancel the kids from Wisconsin tour, so I felt really bad for the, my buddies yeah. who did make that. Yeah. But uh, if I if I had wanted to and if I had made it in, I would have been a six year kid. 
as wow. I call it. There hasn't been a six year kid. There's only been uh, five year kids. Wow, which is pretty. Wow. Cool. You still got what two more years of eligibility? Yeah, two, two, three more and years. Do you see yourself going back or kind of? I I could definitely see it because okay. um, God, yeah, that experience is just life changing. Yeah, mm-hmm. it gives you because you're like on your own for an entire summer. Yeah. yeah, you get a sense of like responsibility. You're making money, which is really nice. Yeah. Um. And it's doing what you love. And you're surrounded by all these other people who are so passionate about yeah. the same thing. Yeah. Mm. It's it's incredible. So what does the <laughs> roster, does the, do a lot of people come and go as they, so I guess what I wanted to ask is, do you have, have you like made friends who have also been like four or five year kids? Oh, kids absolutely. Was, do they <laughs> stay pretty long? Uh, yeah, they, they stay uh, fairly long. My buddy, okay. my buddy Turk, he was the guitar player most insanely talented guitar player I've ever met. Ridiculous. Um, nice. He he was, uh, I want to say, either a four-year or five-year kid. Okay. Um, wicked talented. And, and he would just be, like like everybody else, he'd just show up and be there. Yeah, and yeah. he was just so supportive of everyone who was new. And so I'm like, I'm, I'm going to be that dude if I get in next year. And so, like, just, like, trying to foster a new, wholesome yeah. environment. Yeah. Yeah, those are good connections you can build, and then Absolutely. those are also probably local artists that try to kind of do the same thing you Absolutely. do, and you can go and support each other. That's yeah, why I think uh, the um, on the cover EP on Holocene, the mm-hmm. the horns that are played, that was my buddy Nate. He was in uh, he was in Kids with me as well for the the two years Absolutely. I was in. Those connections that I think the music industry, especially, because it's such a hard mm-hmm. industry to both produce quality stuff and then have quality listens like you've had. I think. Um, having that support system around you is very important. Absolutely. And, and you've said it many times that you are lucky, and yep. that's great to be thankful for that. So, Absolutely. Yeah. LaCroix, sponsor 715 Podcast. <laughs> Man, I wish. That'd be so sick. I um, might just have to drive down there one day and take a camera with them. Because <laughs> yeah. they, they have a place in La Crosse, Yeah, I think. they do. Isn't it like a La Crosse owning company? Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Do they have like a factory tour? I don't know. That'd be so maybe, sick. Maybe we can send some emails, get one of them on the phone. Yeah, That'd be awesome. That'd be so I, cool. I've tried. I've sent them a Twitter DM, and they did respond. So, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I remember um, I did that with like a uh, uh, brew doctor kombucha. I love kombucha too. <laughs> I like like shouted them out in my story. I'm like, do you want to sponsor me? And they didn't say anything. Just like my like my story. Oh, mm. I'm just like, okay, that's that's one step closer. Yeah, that's Almost good there. Enough yeah, for me. that's the same thing we did the, with uh, average men's club. Uh, I was at a, a Hilton, maybe. Yeah. Um, and they had these cups with a mustache on it and it was like the exact same (laughs) mustache that we had so i made like a dumb instagram post and then i just started liking all of their pictures (laughs) and like commenting all of them and i think they followed us um which is so weird yeah but i don't know sometimes you can get a lot of stuff out of those my my buddy things God, my buddy harassed like Justin Timberlake on Twitter for a while. <laughs> like it kind of just became like a running gag where yeah. he would like almost every day just tweet at Justin Timberlake, like thinking of you, yeah. like, that. like thinking of you, JT, and then like just tag him or something. It's like it's my birthday today, the JT or whatever. Yeah. It's yeah. just so so weird, but so funny. Uh, yeah, man. So you're drinking the cran raspberry. To mm-hmm. Bring back. The, what's your favorite Lacroix flavor? Would you Ooh, say? Man, it's tough, man. There's good flavors of the regular cans. Yeah, that's a good point. Cause there's... Yeah, because they're definitely different. Yeah. I think of the regular cans, it would have to be Pomplamoose. I think that's just a Pomplamoose grapefruit. I think yep. that's just a classic. Yeah. I do like the, um, we were talking about it earlier, yep. the hibiscus, hibiscus. Yeah, yeah. So sweet, so good. Yeah, we Which were are, talking about yeah. that too. I mean, <laughs> it's just like it comes down to the same thing. You got LaCroix people and they all like the same flavors. And yeah, um, dude. I'm just hoping they stay in business. Man. I hate coconut. I hate yeah, that, that it's, one's trash. It's like sunscreen, but there's <laughs> there's people that there's people that like it and people that mm. don't. Yeah, my mom likes it. I'm just yeah. like, nah, dude. Yeah, and I feel like if they like it, that's like the one flavor that they're kind of like, you yeah. know. <laughs> but um, yeah, there's the short cans and the tall cans, and the tall cans have very very different f- types yeah. of flavors, like mixed flavors and stuff oh, like that. So. Isn't cranberry oh. apple. Yeah, kind of it's like that and, one is and bomb. That one's so. There's good. like a well, pineapple um, one. Pineapple and like, a like watermelon strawberry. kiwi. Watermelon is, kiwi is the one, but yeah. yeah, I just saw there's a new short watermelon can, and Ooh. I bought it, so I'm going to try that right after this. That's what's up. <laughs> so, oh my god. Yeah, man. I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever get Jackson. Into it. 
Jackson, man. Are you one of those? It's TV static guy. Who yeah. Exactly. Oh, that's what he always yeah. says. No, I no, just he say says it's water it's a with a flavor suggestion. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. I like that. It's more original. I'm not a. Uh, I'm just not into it. I guess. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. It's not for everybody. Yeah. It's. It's a definitely an acquired taste. So. <laughs> yeah. Even like, I get mad when uh, you go to a restaurant. and It's like, ooh, cucumber water. I'm like, <laughs> oh, like, like, like the, the fancy <laughs> regular water. Yeah. Oh, I. Man. I like my water plain. Maybe ice cubes. Ice cubes are good. I ice, like ice yeah. cubes. I'd say ice cubes are one of my favorite uh, food, if you can count them as that. Struggle I, food? I always find myself eating them. Yeah? Yeah. Once I'm done. Yeah. Respect that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Spencer, thanks for coming on to the 715 today, experiencing some hot jelly beans, <laughs> oh, talking man. LaCroix and talking Absolutely. music. It was awesome to have you on. We'll, Thank you. This is we'll, fun. Um, definitely have to set something up again and good luck with your uh, music career and Thank you. everything in the future that holds for Spencer Douglas, everybody. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I also want to say with Spencer, it's not only luck. This kid's got a lot of skill. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you can find him anywhere with uh, Spencer Douglas Music, yeah. right? SpencerDouglasMusic.com. Yeah. Spencer Douglas, Spotify, iTunes, yeah, Google. Absolutely. Look it up, you'll find it. <laughs> mm-hmm.